John Kohler and I are checking out this date farm today and I wore this shirt saying my favorite jewels are med jewels even though I now am growing you know over 15 varieties of dates in addition to med jewels. Med jewels are very popular nowadays. Let's go inside the date jungle and see what's uh, growing on inside there. John you're standing in front of an amazing fig tree. Where are we right now? We're here at Flying Disc Date Ranch. We're flying this ranch here in Thermal, California. First time I've ever been here. Why did you choose this place? Well, because I've been buying the dates from Flying Disc for like probably like 20 years now. And I've always heard about this place and how they use, you know, and grow in biodynamic without using crappy things like Roundup, like many date farmers may be using and all these pesticides and stuff. They don't do none of that stuff here. They're also doing a lot of permaculture here with a lot of different kinds of fruit trees like the fig. Absolutely, they have figs, pomegranates, grapefruit, other citrus, even guavas interplanted along with all the dates. So they really maximize the use of the space. They also cover their soil because that's actually very important instead of just having dirt all around the whole you know, orchard. What's your favorite kind of date to get from them to eat? I like the barhees when they're wet, you know, like when they're fresh, like fresh barhees. Like they're just chewy, like syrup. They're so good. All right, so we're inside the Amazon of dates that my man Robert here has planted. And Robert, you call your place the Flying Disc. Flying Disc Ranch. Flying Disc Ranch. And you bought this property, but you planted all the dates here. Is that correct? We did everything. We put all the pipes in. We put all the trees in. We leveled it, of course, before we started. When did you first start? How many years ago? Uh, 1979 here. Wow. 1974 in the valley. So some of your palms are maybe maybe almost 40 years old. Um, the only ones that are are these two uh, big, tall, shaggy ones. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty large. Two males, and those were actually those two were the first palms planted on the property. Have you grown any of the dates as seedlings or all just from pups? No, we, ha we have a lot of seedlings. Have you ever found any good tasting ones? Absolutely. Really? So those are unique to you? Oh, uh, yeah. We have That's about great. five of those. That's great. So what are some of your favorite dates to eat here on the property um, and to grow? I like dry dates as opposed to soft. Okay. So that would cover all varieties. So give me some examples. Medjool, um, Deglet, Sahidis, Kadrari, Dairies. Uh, some of the unusual ones are Amber, Cire, uh, Thori, uh, did I say Kastawi? I don't think so. Nope. So Robert, when you plant a new pup, mm -hmm. what kind of success percentage do you get? Do you always get them to live or how does it work? No, it's, um, it's probably 80% uh, take. Okay. And you said your favorite months for planting a pup or taking a pup off the mom are April? Well, my favorite month would probably be May, but okay. we're too busy. So okay. we usually do it in April. Because right now it looks like you just got done pollinating and tying all your clusters. Yes, we're, and, we're in the process of thinning. And your Kadrawis look like they're being thinned right now. Uh, Kadrawi is not a self thinner. Okay. Some are self thinners like uh, Deglet Noor. Oh, really? And dairy are south thinners. Back in the day when they tried to figure out how to hybridize, that was what they wanted to um, put into the commercial varieties. Oh, the self thinning. Yeah. Wow, that's and it's interesting. Especially uh, good with dairy. Dairy is one of the best south thinners. And my dairy palm is fairly big, like aggressive looking palm. Is that pretty consistent? With a lot of shoots. With a lot of shoots, yeah. Yeah, that is. Okay. And that is the reason, uh, that's the reason why it's the favorite one for the uh, Jewish uh, sukkahs. I think that's how you say it. Okay. Where they cut the hearts of palm out. Okay. It's kind of like, you know, what I guess similar to what 
uh, Christians would call Palm Sunday. Right. Anyway, it has some significance to uh, their faith. And the reason why is they use that one is because farmers have so many suckers that they want to cut those off. And you so. said that when you, uh, you love the barhi date because of the kalal stage when it's, when it's yellow. Right. And when you get your barhis to produce, how many pounds of dates could you get off of each palm per, um, per year? If it's a mature palm, like this one is, uh, is uh, adolescent, still has offshoots on it. So that's an adolescent. Uh, this would be uh, just after rooting, this little one right this here. This little guy, yep. And then this would be um, uh, fully mature. Because over here to our side, right along your wash here, you have yep. all the mature barhees. Yeah. Didn't you tell me earlier well, 600 pounds sometimes? Probably at least 600, yeah. Wow, that's an amazing that amount of That one's got at least 10 clusters <laughs> on it, and they'll probably be six, 60 pounds each. I mean, that's an incredible amount of fruit. It is, yeah. But you said your Kadrawis maybe only get about half that much. Right. That's amazing. Two to 300 pounds. What stage of the date growing process is your least favorite? Um, as far as labor or tediousness or whatever? Well, I would probably say dethorning just because it's, yeah. it's very. It's like martial very arts. Athletic. Sure. Vigorous somewhat. Tie down is probably the most physical job, but it's um, it's a little bit different because you're not you're not really swinging knives, right? Or climbing, you know, helter skelter through the crown. How many date palms do you have at your property here? Well, if you counted everything, uh, probably a thousand. Wow. Producing. Um, Probably right now, 450. And, and what was your mindset in 1979? What made you want to go into the date business back then? Um, I started in 74. Okay. This property came available in 79. Um, I've always been a gardener slash farmer. Okay. Since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Grew up in Santa Barbara to uh, my parents were gardeners, orchard. Uh, you know, they, we had a lot of kids, a lot of brothers and sisters, so you're, you're, the more you're, food they grew. You're one of how many? Uh, seven okay. Yeah. So the more food they grew, the cheaper the food bill. Sure. Was. And we were surrounded by, um, well, we had a Greek neighbor to the rear and we had Germans and Scandinavians um, in the neighborhood, and they all had gardens, they all had orchards, hmm. uh, grew grapes, olives, all that kind of stuff. So when did you first start growing dates yourself? Uh, 1974. And how old were you? Uh, 27. So, and what about the date process did you like compared to other fruit trees? Um, I liked the physicalness of it. Hmm. I've always been competitive. So you're like a date athlete. And I was, every everything I investigated about dates, uh, everybody said, oh, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't try it. That maybe it's made you want much. to, that made you want to do it more. That's right. <laughs> I want to thank you for the questions and for the tour here today sure. and having me out, so. Yeah, sure. And what's your website for those people that want to find out more about Flying Disc? It's uh, Flying Disc Ranch. Uh, dot com, you know, they, all the W's and sure. flying disc ranch. I'll put it in the description below and can they order dates from you? Yeah. Okay, great. So let me ask you a question about the soil for dates. What is your opinion about what a new date pup needs for the soil and a mature date pup? What do you constantly have to add to it to keep it healthy and full of nutrients? Well, the, the main thing I think is um, having um, 
something in the soil that's going to retain moisture. Oh, okay. Because that's the biggest thing with Which, the pump. What are some of those things you use? Well, this is all date mulch. We're this standing on top of all, all kinds of prunings, fronds. All the prunings from the date palm. Right. And uh, putting that in the soil. Um, so that's your mulch? That's the mulch, yeah. And uh, putting compost. Um, like when we transplant an already rooted offshoot, we, we dig the hole twice as deep. Okay. And, uh, add some compost in there? Add some compost, yeah, and then fill it up. So it's mostly just compost and native soil? Yeah. And mulch? Yeah, right. So this is Spike. Spike, you look so cute. He is so cute. Look at your face. You're about to fall asleep. Come on, Spike. <laughs> Spike, you look so chill. Hey, Spike, do you like eating dates? Do you? Yeah. He's a sweetheart. He's one of the only ones that eats some. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> Good job, Spike. Oh, wow. And that's how I met like a man and he was like Sebastian. Oh yeah, 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 no, 